Dan Tito writes, Hey John, have you heard George R.R. R. Martin's comments on Marvel movies? He said, While Yellow Jacket, Ant-Man's antagonist, makes a decent villain here, I am tired of this Marvel movie trope where the bad guy has the same powers as the hero. The Hulk fought the Abomination, who is just a bad Hulk. Spider-Man fights Venom, who is just a bad Spider-Man. Iron Man fights Iron Monger, a bad Iron Man. Yawn. I want <laughs> more films where the hero and the villain have wildly different powers. That makes the action much more interesting. Interesting. I think he's kind of right. What do you think? Well, I mean, everybody knows George R. R. Martin is one of the foremost authorities on comic book action. Uh, no, that being said, he's got a point. He's got a point. But but let's. I think also he's stretching a little bit. Venom was not Spider-Man's first villain. That's a villain that is a natural villain that came along much later. And if you read the comic book history and understand how Venom came to be, it actually makes sense. It's not just a coincidence that here's this giant spider creature versus this. And in the cinematic universe, he went through a lot of other villains first before he got to that. When you're looking at Ant-Man, if you saw the movie, I won't give too many too many spoilers away here, but Ant-Man apparently had a lot of adventures and had a lot of foes. And... Yellow Jacket became a natural, like narrative-wise, it was a very natural and organic flow to lead to that being the big threat that he had to face. With Hulk facing Abomination, that's another problem of, well, who the hell do you put in there to fight the Hulk? I mean, who, you got to have somebody that can but match that. He didn't fight the Abomination. That was just a, the that was the second Hulk. The first Hulk, he fought a cloud. Well, he thought... Uh, so, I, Mar Martin, stop eating all those chickens and get with it. That and was the, the second Hulk. Don't forget about the Hulk dogs. <laughs> yeah, the Hulk the dogs. The Hulk that, dogs. That's kind of wildly different and creepy, right? <laughs> then, yeah. He's in between that 48th slice of pizza, and he's like, I'm tired, <laughs> yawn. These superhero dramas, I must kill another character. And savagely. Spectre Nick yeah. Nolte. Yeah, he's fighting Spectre Nick Nolte <laughs> in the water. Um, so, with the Iron Man one, once again, as an origin story, that was very natural and organic that Iron Monger would kind of be the villain. That's so that kind of felt natural. Though Dennis did bring up a good thing about the Ironmonger. Why did it have to be Jeff Bridges in the suit? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like he trained to fight and stuff, and all of a sudden, I'm in the suit now, Tony, fight me. You know, it's, it's a little less pushing it a little bit. That, uh, yes, I will, I will give you that. that <laughs> there were several things about that that was sure. pushing it uh, to, to bring up. <laughs> um, but I, look, I've had the thought before, too. It's like, why does this superhero have to have somebody who's their exact opposite? But remember, there's that old kind of mythos in superhero movies and in comic books th themselves that kind of suggests, we see this in Batman all the time, that the existence of this hero is kind of what spawned the existence of that villain to want to be the pole. Like, why does the Flash have to fight the reverse Flash? Why, right. I get it. But the universes are bigger than, the, than that. And the fact that they have polar opposites kind of makes sense in some way. So I really don't see, even though I've noticed it too, I really don't see it as a problem. What do you think? Yeah, you know, it's not a problem. But I understand what he's saying. I mean, I, I agree with him a little bit where it's like it starts to the yawn factor increases every time. Like when you have the Avengers and they're going to fight a bunch of like uh, 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 faceless creatures, you know, like the the Yat Chitari It's all the same creatures and they're all connected like a hive mind drone thing. Turn that one thing off. They all fall apart. Ultron hive mind. One thing. All things fall apart. It's like. How many more, like, what Avengers, you know, three, I hope Thanos doesn't have, like, and now my Infinity Glove creates a million Thanoses <laughs> that are all controlled by my Infinity Glove, and they're all fighting little, you know, I mean, it's like uh, diminishing returns, the law of diminishing returns, and I think that happens with the yin-yang of, you know, you created me, I created you first, that kind of Batman yeah. thing. It makes it a lot easier when you're not writing, you know, a series of books that, that get turned into successful seasons of television shows. When you have one movie that's a two-hour film, Act One, Act Two, Act Three. When you come, you know, when you have the origin of the character and their villain combined, it helps tell the story. It creates a little more epicness to the story. But I agree. I mean, you could change it up. Like, uh, say, Spider-Man is fighting like maybe a character with electrical powers, like Electro. <laughs> oh, right, that happened. <laughs> um, you have you have certain things that happen, and then they work or they don't work. So you know, it it can work, and it doesn't have to be. He can fight. The thing with Ant-Man is you wouldn't have all those amazing sequences, like them fighting inside of a suitcase, if he wasn't fighting someone with the same powers. So. It's a it's a give and take, I think. Yeah, there's something to be said for a level playing field, and now it's just the <laughs> fact that I fight for the side of good and you fight for the side of evil. That's our only difference, and then good wins. You feel you, you feel nice about yourself. The justice prevailed. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I read these comments, and I was like, George R. R. Martin is a kindred spirit. We both like boobs and dragons, and now we agree <laughs> on the villain aspect, and that's one of the points that David Ayer made at Comic-Con about his film Suicide Squad is that DC has the better villains, and sometimes it is interesting to see 
somebody like Superman, who has all these powers, go up against Lex Luthor, who's just this crazed rich billionaire. Same thing with Batman. Batman has neat powers. He's got a lot of money. But when he goes up against something like the Joker, while they are shades of each other mentally, they have vastly different powers and abilities. So it's nice to see a dichotomy from time to time. It's not my it's not my make or break when I go into a movie though. When I saw Ant Man, it wasn't like, oh man, he's just fighting somebody like himself. It is nice right. and refreshing to see Guardians of the Galaxy though. When you have Gamora had some similarities to the villains that they were fighting, but Star Lord had no idea what he was getting in, into. Right. Rocket Raccoon had no idea what he was getting into, and it was fun to see all these different types of aliens and heroes and villains go at each other. So we need both of them in our world. George R. R. Martin, thank you for making the comments. Please keep cranking out some material. Yeah. <laughs> that book already. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> I'm just, well, I'm just joking. <laughs>